Welcome to the shortwave radio channel and I'm going to answer a, um, a series of questions. A lot of you are asking me if I'm, um, you know, if I've changed my mind on what I think of the uh, K180 WLA loop antenna. And I get a lot of questions because you guys have been seeing me change the position where it is. It's now in the backyard. A balcony where I actually do have some shortwave reception and I get a lot of questions of course of um, there's there's the VHF UHF questions that I'll answer in the VHF UHF channel uh, and give a little verdict there so for those once again that don't know what this is this is it looks like an MLA 30 if for those that know what that is it's a magnetic loop antenna. The difference with this one is it's a wideband loop antenna. The MLA30 is from 100 kilohertz, or depending on the version you have, 500 kilohertz all the way to 30 megahertz. It's a medium wave and short wave antenna. This one starts at the same range, but goes all the way up to 180 megahertz. 180 megahertz. What that means is that you actually have a reception in the VHF range. Um, if you have a scanner radio or if you have devices that go above 30 megahertz. So it's different because it has a wider frequency coverage. Now, when I tested it in the front balcony, it was unusable in shortwave. I had too much FM breakthrough. And a lot of you were saying, well, you need to put a filter to the radio and no you don't understand this is an amplified antenna the breakthrough is happening in the antennas amplifier not on the radio side of things so I can't do anything really except open the box and try to do something within the amplifier there because apart from that it it the breakthrough is not happening on the radio side it's not my radio that's overloading it's the amplifier that's in the little box that you see at the bottom of the picture here that's way different from a radio overloading so i can't put a filter on the cable from you know the antenna to the radio because it doesn't change anything the breakthrough is already there and it's happening in that little amplifier box now that said because i do live in a very high fm signal environment I've moved it in the backyard and over even though there is some breakthrough it's not as bad in the backyard because the signals are probably kind of attenuated due to the a big metal shed that's there and what happens is that I except for some of the regions where I do get a breakthrough I get some shortwave reception there and where it works and where there's no FM breakthrough it seemed to work quite well one of the observations I will have is that it doesn't seem to be as good when you go in lower frequencies. So, for example, if I do CHU Canada, 3330 kHz, the MLA-30 beats this antenna really, really a lot. So the MLA-30 seems to be better there. But in higher frequencies of shortwave, you know, if I listen to stations in 9, 10, 11, or 15, 19 meter band, 15 megahertz, it performs decently when there's no FM breakthrough, like I said. This brings me to a question that I have a lot of you been asking me, and it's, okay, so if I live in a place where there's really no strong FM stations around me, would this be a better choice than the ML830? And... I will say that if you have no interest in VHF or higher, if you have no interest in listening to above 30 megahertz, get the MLA-30 and you know that you'll get an antenna that actually works well, whatever signals around you are uh, happening. The thing that is um, probably more of interest is if you do want to listen to the VHF range, if you live in a quiet radio environment, no big FM stations, it actually could be an interesting antenna for anybody that wants the wideband capability of it. 
But like I said, you are taking a risk because obviously it just need you just need one FM station or one station in a frequency range that overloads the amplifier and you're screwed. There's no shortwave reception. From all the comments, because I've had a lot of comments from some of you that have this antenna, um, it, it goes like this. Those that live in quiet environments seem to enjoy this antenna and have good reception on shortwave and are happy with it. But those that live in big cities or live in close to uh, stronger FM stations pretty much agree with me that they can't really receive anything with the K180WLA. So I think the environment where you are is the very important factor of, you know, will I be moving on or not to this antenna or should I buy an MLA 30? So simple uh, answer, even though it's a little complex answer, is you don't care about 30 megahertz and above, get an MLA 30. And that's it. It performs well and you won't have the risk taking of maybe some FMs or some station overloading the amplifier. You want a wideband VHF capable antenna? Well then it will depend on your environment. You live far away from strong signals? This might be a good antenna for you. You live in a big city? I don't think it's a good choice if your main listening will be shortwave. And that is probably the bottom line here. So it's very, very dependent on your environment. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.